Sound speed. Marker. Action. Check, check. Check, one, two. Son of a... Down speed. Action. <sighs> and hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for a True Audio Presents. I want to say thank you for joining us. If you can tell, we're in a new studio. This is the brand new Studio A at True Audio Los Angeles. If you can see, we've got Spencer <laughs> awesome. at the Switcher. We've got Tom here from Sennheiser. Tom, how are you doing, sir? I'm good. We've got oh, our shaking shots, hands. Right? Yeah, we can do it. Well, we'll <laughs> disinfect later, but you know, we've all been immunized, so you don't have to worry about that. And we have something incredible to show you guys today. If you haven't heard about it, this is the brand new Evolution Wireless Digital from Sennheiser. Let's take a look at a commercial, and we'll be right back.
Progress means moving on. At some point, the familiar ends, and the next step is wholly new. It's a risk. But risks are how we grow, and if we're not going to grow, then what's the point? Where's the satisfaction of getting it done or good enough? Enough is the bar for acceptable, not excellence. No, excellence is always one step further. You deserve tools that aim higher. Your needs, like your path, are not fixed. Evolution Wireless Digital does more than get the job done. It helps your work evolve. I could walk you through what's new. The power of a digital UHF system, the scalability, the streamlined simplicity of the design, or how all of the key functions can be performed at a distance. But there's another place in time and plenty of links for details. The truth is simple. We set our sights higher and built what you needed. The result? A system that responds to your needs, allowing you to redefine how you perform. Whether you're the tech, the talent, or a bit of both, this is the way forward. Evolution Wireless Digital, evolving with you. Evolution Wireless Digital with Tom from Sennheiser, everyone. What do you think? Tom, thank you so much for bringing this in today. Yeah, you're absolutely welcome. Yeah, so tell us a little bit more about it. What, what makes this unit so amazing? Well, you know, it, it might look unprepossessing. It might look like another wireless device, and, and in fact, it is. But in many, many ways, it's absolutely game-changing, and I'm absolutely serious about that. There are things that this does that our most expensive wireless D6000 won't even do. And uh, some things that are in this that are in our D6000 that are amazing things that you'd pay much, much more money for. So believe me when I say that, that this changes the game in a lot of ways. And you'll, you'll see that. It's a brand new digital platform, uh, a brand new codec co-developed with the Fraunhofer Institute in Germany. So it's top-notch in every way. All the components are incredibly uh, linear and really, really, really top-notch. So you'll, you'll, and you'll see, it's the easiest to use wireless that's ever been invented. It's ridiculously easy, and we'll talk I about that. I can attest to that. It's, you know, I've had it now for about a week and a half in the studio. I've been filming with it. In fact, you're going to see throughout this uh, live stream, we have a bunch of B-roll that we filmed in the new studio to show you all the different things. Um, one of the things that I want to talk about with this system is about the dynamic range, because I know that that's something that you guys worked really hard in this system. Talk to me about what dynamic range is for anybody that may not know at home, okay. and why it's so special in the system. Okay, well dynamic range, this is one of the key developments here, is this system has 134 dB of dynamic range. So what does that mean? That's 14 dB more than the best of anything, including our stuff, and that's five times more dynamic range. The dynamic range is that thing you adjust when you adjust sensitivity because you might have a quiet speaker or you might have a really loud speaker and you're trying to basically adjust the transmission level to capture that without distortion. With 134 dB of dynamic range, you can capture the softest person to the loudest to the loudest instrument to anything you want to capture without any fear of any kind of distortion happening or, or worried about capturing that really quiet sound. So that changes a lot of things. One of the big things that changes is that there's no need for a sensitivity setting. So you all know that um, in the transmitter, in a typical transmitter, you're going to have a screen and you're going to have to go into a menu, adjust the sensitivity to match the person and their level of speaking so that you get the cleanest sound. Well, we've taken that uh, completely out. There's no, no need for it. So there's no need for a screen. There's nothing to adjust in the transmitters. I have, as a matter of fact, the body pack on. And you're listening, of course, to uh, Evolution Wireless Digital through yeah, an ME2. I'm through a hard line. Tom is using the Sennheiser Evolution Wireless Digital through the belt pack. What is the belt pack model number? Uh, it's an SKEWD. So uh, the thing about that is you notice, I mean, it's weird to look and see no screen, but there's nothing, no reason to have it. And we'll show you, you know, some of the things that you're used to seeing on a screen. We'll show you where you'll see it on a screen. But uh, all metal construction, by the way, and on the body pack, the power is behind the door, so you can't have talent fiddling around and messing that up. All there is, there are th two buttons on the top, a power button, 
and a sync button, which we'll talk about later. So that 134 dB of dynamic range, what's, again, what that means to you, no sensitivity settings whatsoever. And kind of in the, under the heading of, why didn't anybody think of this before, the uh, uh, sort of equivalent of that is gain in the digital world, right. because it's an all digital system. Um, and we put that in the receiver. So because we can communicate with the receiver at all times, um, we didn't, there's no need to do anything with the transmitter. So no need for all that stuff. So that's what dynamic range does for you. It just eliminates a whole lot of hassles. Again, makes this the easiest to use system. Yeah, it's just a very for a beginner or a pro. Exactly, yeah. If you don't understand, you know, how dynamic range works and how to control it, this system's got you covered. And if you understand dynamic range a little bit more, you're going to even be able to utilize this system even better. And it takes, it takes time to adjust sensitivities. That's just yes. one other step step you don't have to do in your busy schedule when you're trying to you know set up a shot or whatever you're trying to do yeah in fact we were gain staging for the past two or three days in this live room with our hard lines you came in here put the EWD on and you calibrated it like that you're like it's done yeah, everything's done and it sounds good and clean very amazing system next thing I want to talk about I want to jump because I know that we want to talk about no intermod but I want to skip that I want to talk about the app control first because okay. like you just said there isn't a lot of there's no screens on the units so let's you know ease everybody's mind and show them how incredible these apps are. I'm going to step out of the way so you can demonstrate this. Okay, well I don't need to show this to you because this should come up on the screen, mm -hmm. my phone. Well, so we'll wait for that to come up. Oh, it's already up. There you go. You've got it right next to you. On oh, that it's next to me. Right okay, there. cool. Mm -hmm. So what you see here is a demo mode. By the way, you can download this um, software. So no, nothing else has an app. So this is app control of everything that's in the receiver and therefore whatever you need to, uh, to control in the transmitter. So the app is free for all uh, I, uh, Apple devices, uh, including the Apple Watch, as you mentioned, right. <laughs> and all Android devices. So no worries there, it's free. You just look up Sennheiser Smart Assist on the store, the Google Play, download it. You can have it now. Um, and play with it. So, and I suggest that get a get a feel for what it does in demo mode and the things you can adjust. But right now we're in demo mode, and we see that we have uh, in demo mode five virtual uh, receivers. There, they're all named. They're all color coded. Um, they give you messages. You'll notice at the top it's saying it, the smart center up there uh, in this area is saying. Uh, receiver with incompatible firmware. In other words, it gives you emergency messes, messages, something you might want to address. You've got a mic clipping someplace. You've got an out of range uh, receiver. So that's just like, you know, take a look at this. Battery's low on, on, on Marie's mic or whatever. And then you have each of the receivers below. We can click in, you just tap in, just like any app. I mean, it's just apps are easy and intuitive. We all know how to use them. Uh, and there we have Buck and some of the things we can do with Buck's receiver. We can lock the receiver so nobody can touch anything on the receiver itself and change anything. That's handy. We can uh, mute lock the transmitter. On the transmitters, there, are a mute, there is a mute button and uh, you can lock that out so talent can't play around with it. They can play with it, but they can't manage to do anything with it. Uh, then we scroll down and we get more things we can do. We can manually set the frequency. We can sync the transmitter. We'll show you all these things uh, in a bit. We can auto scan this one receiver if we want, if we want to just change the frequency of this one. Uh, we can adjust the gain. The story I like to tell about gain is that, let's say in, the, in an older system, you're doing, I don't know, a high school production or something like that. You've set up all your mics, you've done your dress, everybody's you know, set, their, their sensitivities are set. You know who talks loud, who sings quiet, whatever. And, um, and then you go uh, live and your first presenter comes out and he or she freezes, sees their grandparents and their parents and their friends. And all of a sudden they're like, oh, blah, 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 blah. And in the previous world, all you could do is slam your faders forward, hope that you get something out of it. it with uh, Evolution Wireless Digital, with the Smart Assist app, you can simply go into gain, because this is in the receiver. I'm at zero, I just take it up, let's say, I you know, crank it up 9 dB, press OK, it automatically, instantaneously has updated the receiver and her level comes up. So in the time it takes you to make those two little moves with your fingers, her level's right back up. So that's very handy. And the important thing about that is that the app runs on Bluetooth low energy. 
That means that it's only sending or receiving signal when there's a command. So then it's not constantly communicating, wasting your batteries and stuff. So when it sends a command, it sends it, it's done, it shuts down. It has a range of over 100 feet. So what does that mean? That thing, the scenario I just talked about, let's say your gears at front, your receivers at front of a house or something, the, your stage left, you're up there, you can change that gain from stage left because unless you're more than 200 feet away. And I've demonstrated this doing things across warehouses and everything. That's amazing. Or maybe your gear's on one side of the stage or someplace else. Uh, maybe you have a plant mic that you don't want to dig out and you're not getting enough from the transmitter. Maybe you have a follow car, a, a number of scenarios, a, a costume like Mass Singer or something, where you can't get at the transmitter easily. You can do all those adjustments right from the app, from 100 or more feet away. That's not been done before. That's no, a, that no, is a game changer. No, not with the phone. We've, ten, we've been testing it here at True Audio. We had uh, the system on the rental shop and we were able to, on the rental desk rather, and we were able to go all the way outside and still control it through the, the concrete wall. It's, it's incredible the range that it has. Mm -hmm. So that's really important. And you can change the AF out, your audio analog output if you, you know, from here as well. That's a, a typical adjustment to, so that you hit the board with whatever level they need to see. Can um, multiple people control the same one? Like if, the, if I had the app, could I control this as well? Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> Because uh, you pair yourself with the, with the system, um, and it's only that app that can control it. So Very somebody good. could have the app, they can't get into your system. Safety. Somebody could have the receiver and they can't hear your system because it's paired. Um, the receiver and the transmitter are paired. So although it's uh, digital and it's not encrypted per se, it's a unique codec, so right. you'd have to have our receiver and you'd have to somehow break the pairing which can't be done. Yeah. So you have no fears of somebody else you know, getting into it in any way. For sure. Um, so the distance, is, the distance control is super, con uh, super important. You can do that with a sync as well. The only time you have to touch the transmitter in terms of pressing a button on it besides turning it on is if you wanted to change the frequency of this particular receiver. You do have to sync the transmitter. But the traditional old way was you brought the transmitter up to the, uh, to the IR window, the infrared window on the receiver and had to sync them that way. Well, with, with the Evolution Wireless Digital Smart Assist app, all you need is somebody somewhere within 100 and 125 feet of the receiver, press the sync button on the transmitter once and it'll instantly sync. And, and it's it, that fast, too. It is it's fast. It's absolutely in real time. From this demo, if I do an auto scan, for instance, I'm going to auto scan this demo channel buck here, and it'll say uh, it synced the transmitter that fast, assuming somebody had pressed the button. Right. And uh, it, it tells you everything to do. It'll tell you when you do it, uh, any kind of auto scan to please shut your transmitters off and, you know, all the basics that we learn. But for somebody that knows nothing, they absolutely don't have to worry about anything. The right. app is so simple. And let me show you a few other things on the app since we got on the app yeah. first. Um, you can see it gives you battery level and all the, all the important things you want to see. You literally don't have to look at this. You don't have to. You can make all the changes at the receiver if you don't want right. to use an app. But sure. the app is a breakthrough thing, so mm -hmm. it's really cool. And we're all used to them, so it's not like some big learning curve about exactly. menus. So on the bottom of the app, you'll see I'm on dashboard, which shows these channels, which is showing me a dashboard of the channels and, and the information. I can go over to the left and go to Support Hub. And then we have three, at the top again, we have three kind of uh, listings. The first one is quick tips. And here, there are a bunch of simple things that, you know, m most of us know, or maybe we don't know, or maybe we have a, a brand new user, how to put batteries in. You can scroll around, figure that out. How to mount antennas, how to screw on the whip antennas, how to change the capsule on a handheld, because all of the capsules that are available for Digital 6000 and G4 are available for this. So you can upgrade from an 835 to a Neumann KK205 and really you know, up your game if you want to on, on uh, condenser versus dynamic. Uh, how to hold, I love this one, how to hold a microphone. You know, that's pretty cool. Well, some people don't know. No, they constantly, we constantly get this. They hold the antenna, they cup the, the capsule. 
how to mount it, how to put it, you know, how to mount it in a rack, mm -hmm. and even how to put a lavalier on. That's all in the support hub under one heading, quick tips. We can go to, I'll go next to manual and the Perfect. instruction manuals in there as well as some FAQs and some product specs and other things that you might need. Um, and in the middle is Sound Academy. And here we have a series of videos, short little videos, one to two minutes, uh, of the product uh, developer actually showing you how to do things. Like if you forgot, for instance, how to add devices to your dashboard, you can just click on the video and it'll tell you. You know, press the sync button uh, with, with your app and everything pairs up. Oh. Um, the interesting thing about this that I should mention is that it, the app will hold support up to 16 devices. If you need more than 16 devices, you have to have another app. So it's like you're running, you know, different parallel systems. Copy. Um, the, the systems go into their own network. There's no wires necessary. Through Bluetooth, they create a network so that when I go to do an, oops, sorry, an auto scan of all of these devices, they will update automatically. They will assign frequencies. You don't have to do any coordination. It's, it, they're, as long as they're all in the same group, they can control right. and it does everything to all of them at the same time. And part of that is, is the third thing we'll talk about. But let me show you yeah. up here, three dots at the top. We all know that means some kind of menu. Mm -hmm. And here are things that you can do. And I'll show you the auto scan. So you get the hypnotic. It says, turn off your transmitters, turn on your receivers. Um, there's the hypnotic uh, Sennheiser It's a foolproof way thing. to do this. Like you said, it's just going to teach you every single step to get the best scan. And see how fast this is updating. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's instantly updating, assigning frequencies and getting them ready to go. So in less, less than 10 seconds, I had five channels That's up fast. and ready to go. 16 channels takes about 10 seconds. That's way faster because typically in another system, digital or analog, you have to scan the entire you have to scan the entire range of that system, so yeah. that takes time, and then it has to calculate all the intermod products and come up with free, uh, banks and presets and groups or what have you. This doesn't need to do any of that because of the other thing we're going to talk yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. Should we bring it up now, or do you have more to talk about? Because I mean, maybe that's a really good segue into no intermod issues with this. Let's device. talk about that. Bring up that title card, sir. Boom. <laughs> Love it. No intermod. Uh, you know, you kind of hinted at it. What is intermod for anybody that just got scared and was like, whoa? Yeah, I hate that word. Well, I, when I, I, we all do. When I teach RF, um, and we've done a lot of webinars this past year while we were at home. Right. Um, the simplest way to look at it is to know the full title. It's intermodulation distortion. Okay, so like any distortion, it occurs in the electronics. It's not happening in the air or anything mystery, mysterious like that. So I use an example of a guitar amp. I'm not a guitar player, I'm a keyboard player. So, But I know guitar players and, and I know uh, how it works. And you can have a guitar amp and your guitars can get a cl clean sound, loud, soft, whatever. You can get a nice clean sound. Or he can overdrive the components and get distortion. Right. So, and you know, we, we like that in rock and roll, obviously. Well, that kind of same thing can happen. When you have two transmitters, remember the antennas they not only transmit, but they receive because they, you know, they're just ignorant like that. Mm -hmm. So um, if you have a couple of them that are close to each other, the power is coming out of this transmitter and it's getting into the other transmitter being received. In, if that drives those components past their spec, and they're typically spec'd only at the power that they produce, not beyond that because then it's way more expensive, and they're, so that's driving them past their linear section where they can do a clean, when you drive transmitters past their linear uh, uh, area, you get something called intermodulation distortion. And that, the uh, manifestation of that are it creates virtual frequencies next to your frequencies. And because those frequencies have a certain level, you can't put another transmitter on that frequency because it will act as interference. So then the more channels you have, the more intermod products are uh, produced and the more avoidance you have to do. The only good thing is that the math is known yeah. and most uh, modern uh, receivers will calculate or they will pre-calculate a list of intermod free channels and then search for which of those preset banks gives you the most channels. So it'll say preset bank one, 12 channels, and if you only need eight to 12 channels, you just choose that. Yeah, you choose then. those frequencies. You must stay in the bank. 
All of that's gone when you eliminate Intermod with this guy. So previous to this, the only two uh, uh, wireless systems that had no Intermod were the digital 9,000 for $85,000 and the digital 6,000 for approximately seven or $8,000 a complete channel. They had no Intermod. Jimmy. Every other digital system has Intermod. It's right. not that it, digital does not eliminate Intermod. The physics are exactly the same. They're just transmitting a different kind of information, not uh, in, as opposed to FM analog. So um, eliminating Intermod frees up a million things. So no more complex coordinations, no more need for complex software to calculate your channels. Exactly. No more need for banks or channel groups, all that kind of stuff. You simply press auto scan, it looks for the next open frequency, loads into the receiver and you're done. So it, again, eliminating Intermod changes really the whole concept of how things work. So that's my explanation of Intermod. <laughs> I think, honestly, I think it's one of the best explanations I've ever had for Intermod. It was great. The second part of that is why do you want no Intermod? Okay, so, well, beyond the frequencies and, you know, calculating, the spectrum's getting smaller. You We're, want your life to be easy, right? <laughs> why not? You know, I, a lot of people really don't, you don't need to understand a lot of RF stuff with, with the Evolution Wireless Digital. Yeah, kind but of agree. we all know in LA, especially, the spectrum is shrinking. It's almost shrunken. Um, and so with no intermod, you can fit more channels in any available space. So the, the frequency range of the Evolution Wireless Digital are, is 56 megahertz of right. one system, and there are three 56 megahertz ranges. If you had that open, then you could have about 92 channels available. Now in LA, we're not going to have 56 megahertz available, but you, there are a lot of places in the country where you do. Yeah. And, uh, and you can get over 90 channels. In LA, you know, having no intermod still allows us to get more channels into any space that is available because it'll look through that range until it finds an open space. So that's a huge, huge advantage. And uh, I think, you know, all, all your, your audience really will appreciate that because so they've never too. had that before. I think so too. Absolutely amazing. Well, I, I know it's a UHF system. I know it's controlled via the app. I know all about the Intermod or lack of Intermod because you, you've solved that conundrum for us. Uh, the dynamic range is incredible. I want to bring up a little bit more about the price because you were just talking about the higher end Sennheiser systems, which are, are phenomenal. I mean, I yeah. know many people that purchase them from True Audio now that love those systems. Let's talk about the price of this because you were talking like you know around like the seven to nine thousand dollar range for all those. What about this guy right here? Okay, so a simple system with the receiver, the transmitter, and a capsule. And I mentioned you can get any capsule you want, but and with you the can click on the versions too just to show them Spencer, so they can see some examples. You can see them on the screen there to let them know which one they're looking at. Uh, okay, so this system, let's say, or with the body pack and a lavalier mic, is six ninety nine retail. That's Amazing. incredible. I mean, the, for the things that it does that are beyond even our most expensive systems, it's absolutely unbelievable. And then the systems uh, scale according to what you want. For instance, if you're a rental company and you have, uh, you have capsules already or you have um, lavalier mics already, um, then you can just buy a basic system and I, you know, without that part. Uh, so a handheld without a capsule, and it would, I think it's 649 for that. And it ranges all the way up to the top, which is a combo with everything, a uh, lot of a handheld, both body, body pack and a handheld transmitter and receiver, of course, um, for 999 retail. And it comes with the rack mount kit, uh, you know, the whip antennas and everything else. So a caveat on that in terms of what's available in the system. Um, because the components are so linear, this is uh, partially how we, we accomplish no intermod. Uh, they're expensive, very linear components. Um, we are developed, we had to develop a new splitter. So we have an Evolution Wireless Digital splitter um, as opposed to the ones we have now like the AC, uh, I'm sorry, the AASA 214 or the new uh, uh, devices like that because those older devices will work, but they generate too much noise. So there may be noise in this system. Um, yeah, so you're not getting the best out of it. So we, well, we uh, recommend that you, you know, buy the new splitter if you need it. That will work backwards compatible with everything. It's just cleaner, that's all, so it's just right. better. We have uh, new half-wave antennas, so longer 
uh, whip antennas, which gain you, and you could use those for anything, antennas are antennas. Sure. Um, and those gain you about one and a half dB, and sometimes that's exactly what you need to get a little more range. Um, we have a new uh, um, directional antenna, the shark fin type, that has the slots for wind so that you get it outside, it doesn't act like a sail. And it has the connector uh, uh, in the position that it should be, which is, which is uh, a vertical so that you don't, you know, put strain on the connector when mm -hmm. you're doing it. Uh, but that splitter is really important. The other little caveat is that on lavalier mics. So I'm wearing the ME2 for the Evolution Wireless Digital. The older ME2s um, are not shielded quite enough for the clarity of the Evolution Wireless Digital. So we so we recommend strongly that you, if you're going to get an ME2 or an ME4 or the headset ME3, that you get the new ones that are shielded better that will operate. Otherwise, you might get a little buzz if you use the older ones. Okay. So it's important to know. And the new ones are differentiated because they have a gold connector. Okay, good to know. And the connector, by the way, let's look at the body pack a little bit. That's a locking connector, screw-on locking connector for the lavalier, uh, a, uh, a solid mount antenna, and then you just have a mute switch, which you can defeat from the app or from the front if you want. So you can That's use it as a, a mute feature. switch if you want or not. And again, all metal construction, solid as a rock. And uh, that covers that, I think. That so that. the systems are available in all these different configurations. And uh, All the links are down in the description below if you guys need to get to them. Um, one of the things that I would love to do at this moment, I know that there are a ton of questions and I want to get to those, but <laughs> right now I know that everybody has been listening to you going through the Evolution Wireless Digital System. Well, we got a little surprise for everybody. I don't know if you know this. We have a new service tech here. His name is Michael <coughs> Russo at the True Audio Los Angeles location and he loves to play guitar every single lunch break. So I was like, you know what, why don't you come in here and let's have some fun and really hear what this Evolution Wireless System sounds like. You want to take a listen? Sure. Oh, you've got them already. Yeah, okay. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. Take a Hi, I'm Russo. I'm the new service tech here at True Audio. And today I am demonstrating the Sennheiser Evolution Digital Wireless with my guitar. What did you guys think of that? That is Michael Russo, our new service tech. So if you guys ever need anything fixed, you need cables, we got a whole team. They're actually behind this wall. Happy to help you out. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And I hope you love the sound of the Evolution Wireless Digital System. Tom, thank you so much for bringing this in. I know that we've got a bunch of questions now okay. from YouTube, so please keep them coming. I'm just going to go through. Peter K. Morrison, you were first, but I'm going to save your question for last, if you don't mind. Uh, Gregory, is this better than the EW500 G4 system? What are the differences between the G4 system and this? Okay, well, first obvious thing is that this is digital. So um, you're talking FM analog versus uh, a digital system. The Evolution Wireless G4 is still functional in a lot of areas. Yeah. Uh, it's great for a, a lot of things. Uh, it's networkable into WSM for frequency coordinations or monitoring and stuff like that. Um, so it's not really a replacement. It's just a move in a different direction. And uh, it's our you know, move into evolving, if you will, G4 into the digital realm, but with a brand new platform, brand new features that have never been seen before. Um, our engineers really hit it out of the park with this one. So uh, it's digital, that's different. It has no intermod, that's different. And that's not because it's digital, it's because of what we did. Yeah. Um, it has app control, that's certainly different. Um, it has a way bigger dynamic range and no compander. That is because it's digital, digitals don't need companders. Um, and uh, it's, it's the easiest to control, coordinate, uh, operate system for anybody that really doesn't you know have a lot of skill set or anybody that does I mentioned being able to do a sync 
from 100 feet that's a, to a transmitter. That's something that's not possible mm -hmm. before, like any other uh, competitive system, has to bring it up and do an IR sync like that. That can be handy for you. Uh, you just need somebody to press that sync button. I, if we had the ability to do this, and I can't, we're pinned in here a little, mm -hmm. I could walk the transmitter down the hall and out the door, as, as Thomas mentioned we did earlier, and do a sync from outside. Um, that's how powerful that Bluetooth and low energy is. And, fast. and it happens It doesn't like that. take any longer to do. Nope. Yep. Uh, other questions? I, I think this is kind of similar to the one that you just answered, uh, but they're asking, uh, Jack is asking if it's a replacement for the G4 system. Not necessarily a replacement. This is just a different egg in your basket. This is. It's a different tool because, yeah. again, there are things that the G4 has evolved from, you know, its whole evolution from G2 to G3, G4. Right. They're back, backwards compatible. Um, they can do other things that you can't do with this. Um, and so it's still a, a very, very useful system to have. And uh, it it's, uh, operates in a kind of a different, different atmosphere. And we expect G4 to continue for many years because, yeah. uh, because it's still a powerful system. Mm -hmm. And uh, not everybody will need what this does. But uh, some people do need what this does. Exactly. A yeah. lot of people do. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we expect that this will cut into G4 sales as people discover this because there are a lot of things it does that are miraculous. Uh, but again, G it's not a replacement for G4. No. And keep in mind, too, that this is the first of a family. So we've developed brand new platforms, brand new ideas, and it will evolve as well. Um, so we expect as soon somebody's bound to ask the question, what about a portable receiver? What about a portable plug-in? This uh, is just plug the in? beginning. New studio, <laughs> new stuff, new lineup of things, right? So, yeah, so that will evolve. That will be probably the next iteration. There'll be several iterations that go. Obviously, at some high broadcast level, you're going to need, uh, you know, uh, digital outputs, uh, Dante, et cetera, et cetera. Sure. That will evolve over this platform. So, again, the start of a, a something really exciting and really new. Absolutely. Keeping the questions going, Android Gamer wants to know 16 devices, meaning 16 transmitters, or 8 transmitters and 8 receivers? 16 paired devices. So a system, let's say, a, yeah. a handheld and a receiver, this a body pack. This is a system, a transmitter right. and a receiver, or the one that Tom is wearing and this. So if we wanted to use this at the same time, we would have to have another EWD receiver that's, out that's here correct. for the two channels. So. Right. So, so up to 16 on 16 any device. Is. Um, it's a limitation of the software. Uh, we think that this is a great marriage of really high quality hardware with the ease of use that comes from app control and software. And uh, I think we really did an amazing job on that. But the software is limited right now to 16 devices. So mm -hmm. if you want 32 devices or 24, you just need another device yep. to control the other ones. So not really a big problem. And again, it could be on an iPad, it could be on an Android, it could be on a watch, the Apple Watch, yep. I guess. Um, whatever you need. What about, let's see, another one is uh, someone's asking, no multicast to multiple receivers. Do you have the ability to multicast to multiple receivers? That's a very good question, and that is not possible uh, at the moment because they're paired, because they're paired in a Bluetooth network. Mm -hmm. That gives us a lot of powerful things in a relatively inexpensive price without having to network and use wiring and things like that. So, uh, yeah, so for those situations, and I know that there are some where you want to uh, transmit to multiple uh, trans uh, receivers, that's not possible at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, someone is asking about low cut. Is there a low cut on this guy for the transmitters? That's a good question. I don't think there is, actually. I don't think I saw it either. Um, Something they could add, potentially, right? Yeah, and part, part of that is um, related to dynamic range, but there is not a, a simple answer is there is not at the moment, no. Copy that. Uh, keep going down the line. What is the latency of this system? Uh, the latency, I forgot to mention that, uh, is 1.9 milliseconds. So uh, okay. this is best in class. Let me tell you some of the things that are best in class. Dynamic range, uh, no inner mod, uh, we talked about that. Getting up to 92 channels in a 56 megahertz range. Battery life. You can use a lithium ion battery that we've de developed. It's not expensive, it's $49. Um, the same works on both the handheld and the body pack. The two uh, desktop charger with two bay charger is $59. So we're, you know, we're, this is not typical Sennheiser fashion where the accessories cost a fortune. <laughs> um, and the, with the lithium ion battery, you can get 12 hours of, of life. With double A's, it's about eight, eight and a half. 
So that's beyond what anybody else can do, even uh, our competitor SLXD, way beyond that, uh, even ULX, uh, QLXD, and even up into the higher ranges of sure. Some of the things that this does just don't exist on any other system, okay. period, not even on ours. So, um, ba but battery life is really important, and I should have mentioned that. Latency we know is important because we know it builds up down the chain. The best system out there is about three milliseconds um, uh, generally in, in this competitive range, and we're 1.9. Having less latency is a good thing, always. If you can achieve it with all the parameters and it sounds great and reliable and all that stuff that Sennheiser looks at, so uh, yeah. I love it. We've got a couple more questions here. Any concerns with a digital transmitter body pack with headset and analog receiver, uh, an IEM receiver worn side by side. Does uh, that make sense? It makes total mm -hmm. sense to me and a very good question because what we're talking about now are two systems talking to each other yeah. in terms of power and we talked about Intermod and yes it's possible for the FM analog, uh, uh, the IEM, to be picking up some of the power. So you do want to separate body packs. You want to have good practices anyway. Yeah, for sure. Adjunct to that is people ask, can I mix this system? I have, you know, I have eight channels of G4, and I want to add four channels of these into the rack. Right. Yes, they can be added in the rack. In terms of frequency coordination, two ways to comp accomplish this, and this is true of Digital 6000, which has no intermod as well. One of the best ways is to separate them. If you can separate their whole ranges by, I don't know, 20 megahertz or 10 megahertz even, then you don't really need to worry about them you know, uh, uh, sending power to each other. If, if you have to keep them in the same system, then use your best practices from your worst system, in this case, in terms of frequency coordination, which is the G4 system. Right. So if it gives you a bank, if it gives you a bank one, then use those frequencies to manually set the frequencies in your uh, Evolution Wireless Digital so that they are now pre-coordinated. Because the, the digital won't have Intermod in it, in its, in its own eco ecosystem, but it will, it will send power into the G4. So use those, those frequencies if you're gonna mix systems. Very good, very good. Good questions, guys. Keep them coming. Uh, and this one, sorry, I'm gonna to try to get it. It's a little smart. It says, how does some of the legacy lobs and headsets work with, this, with the new digital modulation? Do you get digital wine uh, and interference on the legacy lobs? So we, we covered that a little, and that's yeah, a, little another bit. good question right. because it's really important to remember this is that we haven't tested it with every single competitive lob out there. Yeah, that's uh, it has to, to have a 3.5 connector, so you've got that. It's not a Lima or a three pin like that. Um, on our own system, on our own lavalier mics, we know that the current ME2, current ME4, um, and the current ME3 uh, headset mic uh, do not have enough shielding, and you will probably get a little buzz in it. Mm. Um, it may not be noticeable in many cases, but if you've got headphones on and you're a mixer, you're gonna notice it. So we highly recommend that you get the new, the same price, the new ME2, new ME4, new ME3, um, so that, that you're getting the maximum benefit yeah. out, of, out of the system. Honestly, this is a very common thing, you know, when Zach's on Electro, when WYSICOM, when they, or not WYSICOM, rather, when all these systems, you know, went to their digital, you know, a lot of them had to have modified lobs to be able to work because of that. So it's a very common thing to have, you yeah. know, new lobs for the new and system. And a good question, and, it, mm -hmm. and, and the same rules, because physics don't change, the same rules apply. <laughs> Absolutely. And somebody just, you know, reiterating, so no Cat5 on this system, and so the answer is no, but, Correct. you know, this is, again this is the beginning lineup for anybody that's going what why doesn't it have this well again this has so such a high incredible feature set already at the price point that it has and now what you guys are clearly working on is is continuing the lineup so yeah so it, it's you know coming. Uh, what i want to emphasize here is that it's in its own network so it's talking they're talking to each other up to 16 through the app talking to each other or 24 without the app whatever they're talking to each other so they are in a network um, you usually want Cat5 because you want to, you know, you're going into an IT system, um, you know, a pre-existing network, or you want to control it with, say, Wireless Systems Manager, our software for controlling all the, all the rest of the stuff. Right. Um, because there's no frequency coordination necessary and all the things that you generally use WSM for, um, you know, heavy-duty frequency coordination things, there really isn't any much need. Um, in terms of monitoring, because we use WSM to monitor the channels and look at all the parameters, you've got the app for that, and the app can be 100 or more feet away. So pretty much everything that you would need that for exists. 
That is not to say, as Thomas said, that you know, this will not evolve mm -hmm. because we recognize that if you know, it's going to go into a broadcast studio, it's got to be networked in through the system. That will come, sure. uh, as will the portable devices as well. So mm -hmm. we're starting here and uh, you know, we will move forward. Yeah. It's, it's a great opportunity for schools, for auditoriums, for you know, <coughs> theaters, um, for people that are beginning that need you know, something a little bit cheaper on their cart to start with. For you know, another idea that we were talking about earlier is that this is great for talkback communication between your boom operators and your sound utility technicians because it's, just, it's not something that they have to calibrate with all of your other systems. You turn it on, you plug it on, you put it on, and you can go. Let it find a frequency and it's fine. Just yeah. walk away and sync it, you right. know? So there, there are capabilities of integrating this into any system that you want. Sky's the limit. You just kind of have to figure out how can this benefit you. Right. You know? That's why I've made a lot of mention of the distance you can, you can adjust things with because a lot of times in, in location situations, you're not, a, you know, not able to get to a transmitter. You're not For able sure. to, to be close to make a gain change or make, you know, some kind of change in the receiver or something. So it allows you to do that from a distance, which, you know, I, I believe people will come up with incredible uses that we haven't thought of yet. Yeah, <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing what they come up with. Uh, I think one more question and we'll, and we'll wrap okay. it up. Uh, Android Gamer again, great questions, uh, boss. Uh, can I use these with an antenna combiner and mix it with analog receivers too? So if you're using some type of an RF combiner mm -hmm. and having analog and digital signals, is that going to freak anything out? It depends on the combiner and the quality of the combiner. We make an ACA3 that's a four-zone combiner for, um, for multiple rooms, let's say, uh, setups like that. And that is... Uh, the components are, are highly linear because it was designed to work with our digital 6000 system. So it, it depends on how the combiner separates signals, what the, what the separation is what, you know, between uh, uh, channel paths, let's say, or between signal paths. So that's something that would have to be determined through probably in a couple experiments or something. Mm -hmm. But I know on ours, it, you can. <laughs> so. Incredible. Tom, I want to say thank you so much for joining us today. If, if people wanted to purchase these, are they available to purchase right now? This, this product launched two days ago, June 1st, and it is in warehouses. It's, it started shipping two weeks ago to our dealers like you guys, mm -hmm. and uh, it's available in limited quantities, um, yeah, but, it's, but it's available. It's out there, ready to, ready to sell. There's a lot of YouTube videos already being developed and yep, presented, exactly. so I like here. Yeah, right, <laughs> like what right. we're doing right here. And today. in fact, if you guys are interested in one of these systems, you can take a look. We have five different locations: three in the USA, as well as two up in Canada. We're in the process of ordering these right now. So if you want to be one of the first to pick up this Evolution Wireless Digital System and just have a little bit more peace of mind, I guess you would say, pick one up. Good idea. Absolutely. <laughs> Everyone, thank you so much for joining us together today in Studio A for our first shot. Whew, this was a fun one, also stressful, but I'm so happy to have it, and you I was honored it. to have it with you, sir. <laughs> thank you for everything. Thank you. thank you. Take care. Everyone, thank you so much for joining us today on True Audio Presents. We'll see you on another one coming up Monday. Can't tell you who, but you'll see us on Monday. Bye. Take <laughs> Bye -bye. care. Thank you.